Welcome to the week five edition of the Prep Huddle. I'm KJ Poulter, joined by my cohorts in, in crime here with the Gazette, Jeff Linder and Jeff Johnson. Uh, you know, guys, uh, Linder, you, you said it a few times, but week five, we're halfway through the season. Um, just seems like we were getting ready for week zero and preseason stuff. Uh, just uh, a few days ago. Yeah, we were just uh, arguing over who's going to do what uh, what feature for the preseason uh, series, and now we're uh, like we're starting to think about the playoffs. Has it been a blur to you, JJ? Yes, a hundred percent. And I was, <clears throat> it didn't really um, hit me until last night. I was, excuse me, talking to a coach um, from one of the smaller classes for a story and uh you know it's like holy cow you guys are now officially more than halfway done with your regular season (laughs) after so uh yeah and yesterday didn't make it feel like football weather right 96 degrees whatever it was so maybe this we always get that one that one spike right that one spike of 90s it uh, thank goodness it was on a Tuesday, not on a Friday night, like it's yeah. been usually about week two or week three, right? Um, so now we're probably actually getting into that fall uh, weather from here on out. Um, well, uh, week five this week, but let's look back at week four uh, at some of the results and, and doings on the prep football scene. Uh, we'll touch base on the, the games that we were at last week. Uh, to start out with, uh, Linder, why don't you get us started? You were at Liberty at Clear Creek Amana, where uh, I think at one point it was 7 6 Clear Creek Amana, but the final score wasn't anywhere near that, was no, it? No, no, it was for 20 minutes, it was a really good game. And then uh, uh, Liberty got a couple quick touchdowns uh, late in the second quarter to go up 20 to 7 and ended up 55 to 7. And uh, boy, they pretty much did thing they wanted in the last two and a half quarters offensively. Uh, uh, keep thinking that uh, Beckman kid is uh, an elite quarterback. I've seen him twice. He's been great twice. Uh, he's got a lot of targets. I think three to seven different kids uh, for completions. Uh, the Gregorier twins, one's a running back, one's a receiver, and they're both very productive. Their defense is good enough. Uh, and I think they've got North Scott at home this week, and that should be a really good, uh, another really good gauge for for Liberty. That's really, I mean, if you look at it, uh, their schedule has been uh, pretty much a, a tough go. You look at opening it up with City High. You've got uh, Western Dubuque in there. You've had Linmar in Week Two. Clear Creek Amanda and now North Scott. That's uh uh that's a pretty tough slate of games through your first the first half of the season. Yeah, it really is. And uh it lights up a little bit after this week. Uh they got Mount Pleasant, Fort Madison, which is four and but I'm not convinced that it's a very good four and oh. And then uh, Burlington and Clinton to close shop. And uh I think if they win this week, uh, I think they're probably looking at eight and one. Wow. Wow. And I know that was a team that, uh, you know, we kind of mentioned in our first couple podcasts that uh, that was a team that we thought could be uh, that one that makes a a big jump from a year ago. So we'll see how that pans out uh, uh, this week and if they can continue that uh, uh, against North Scott, who uh, is coming off a loss to Xavier from a week ago. Um, JJ, let's switch over to uh, to you, you went up to uh, Troy Mills. Um, it's not called the damn bar anymore, but uh, did you stop uh, stop and get some pizza on the way to the to the game on Friday? It was on my list, and there were so many cars parked out front. It was like <laughs> motorcycles. It was like, oh man, I think I'm just gonna get go home. So, uh, and I can't remember the name of it, Pilch. It's, I know we just actually uh, ate there during softball season, and uh, uh, somebody will have to correct us and, and 
let us know so we can we can share that. Uh, but really good food. Um, yeah. Okay. I think good. You know? Garments now, boys. What is what it? Was that? Garments is in Dharma and Greg. That, uh, yes, that's it. That's it. On ABC from a couple decades ago. That's right. That's right. Good call. Uh, we went good. there, and I believe. Uh, um, uh, I think the, the Leebies, maybe. Um, Tegan Leeby was a softball player a year or two ago. Um, I, I think they uh, they own that uh, there at Northland. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, the Lynx, uh, a big winner um, on Friday, uh, weren't they? Yeah, 63 to nothing. It was over uh, Clayton Ridge. It was 56 nothing at halftime. And um, – you know, the score it definitely indicates the uh, the game. Um, I mean, it was it was just uh, one big play after another, essentially, for North Lynn. And I think there was a block punt in there for a touchdown. And, uh, I mean, it was a lot of different guys doing the damage and offensively. And, um, you know, I think we mentioned Tate Hoggenberry here on our podcast at, at times this season. I mean, he's a really good really good athlete, a really good player at about six, four, you know, a place quarterback for him, but can run past people. And, uh, you know, I'm not real sure that the district that Northland is in is real strong boys. And, um, which probably helps, you know, Northland, I'd, I'd say they probably will go eight and one here. Um, might help them with like a playoff home game or two or whatever as it works out. But, um, you know, I think the, the schedule is pretty front loaded. Let's put it that way for, for Northland when you look at what Albert at Lisbon, East Buchanan, uh, I think were the first three games. So links look like they're rounding into form and uh, they actually have a locker room to go into now, which is good. And um, One school is open. I think it's the middle school where everybody conducts classes. So it's still kind of a, a cluster that way <laughs> for those poor kids uh, and teachers um academically but uh, on the football field they look pretty good yeah so they've overcome that adversity that uh little first week hiccup against albernet and they've really uh bounced back wins over east buck and dominant the last two uh on the periphery of the the football game itself you were up there for kind of a special uh uh ceremony um you presented uh austin hilmer with uh, athlete, the Gazette uh, uh, Athlete of the Year Award um, from his senior season. Uh, talk a little bit about that and uh, what it was like to, uh, to kind of, you know, present that uh, to him and the Northland uh, folks. Yeah, thanks to Jeff Linder for writing the script. Um, it was uh, recited beautifully, Jeff. So, um and it's great to, to look at the new plaques, you know, with, with all the names and room on them now for more names in the in future years and uh, the plaque and, and certainly the banner that we appreciate Northland taking and uh, mounting somewhere in the school when they can get back into the, the high school building. Um, you know, and Austin's a great kid. You guys all know that. And tremendous athlete. He's playing basketball now up in Upper Iowa. And they're third – Right, Jeff and KJ, third uh, male athlete of the year, right? With I believe so. Yeah. Joining Jake Hilmer. Six and, years and, or third and seven years or something like that. And Ryan Miller. So, uh, you know, it's a heck of a run for that school. Um, and it really is. A, a, man, it's, it's a small school, and all those kids are, are homegrown. We all know that. Um, they're all from either Cog and Troy Mills, Walker, or, you know, the, the rural communities. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good night and, uh, I actually got a little bit of applause when they, uh, announced my name, which was, uh, scary because nice. I get, I get heckled here at home by my wife. So that's kind of <laughs> what I'm used to, but yeah, it was a great night. It was great to catch up with Austin and, uh, it's hard to believe, but man, basketball is right around the corner and wrestling guys. Yep. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. The Hilmers, uh, Jake and Austin, uh, just our second uh, brother combo uh, joining um, uh, Mor Jeremy Morgan and Marcus Morgan. 
That's right, isn't it, Jeff? It was those the brothers. I don't think Jer did Jeremy win? Yes. yes. Did he? Okay. Yes. And, and yeah. So. so and then we had uh brother sister combo and the Millers from North Glen and then the, the twins, the Gaylers from uh uh Iowa City West and the, the father son duo that uh KJ wrote about this summer and then the uh, the cooks. The cooks. So uh that, it's kind of neat to see the the family connection and another uh, a set of winners. So uh, pretty cool up there uh, at North Lynn. Um, related you had, to North You had a heck of a game. Yeah. Also and that's County. <laughs> kind of related to, to North Lynn. Uh, kind of an interesting group uh, with uh, North Lynn, East Buck, and Al Burnett now. Um, all three teams have played each other there in Class A and uh, – each each of them have a win against one another, all one and one, in that uh, trio of teams that might cross paths here uh, in the postseason. I'm sure, but uh, yeah, promised to be a real uh, a close, hard fought game, right between East Buck and Alburnett. Um, not exactly the way you thought it would play out. Uh, both teams came in, um, I think, averaging uh, like five five points a game against um on average uh both teams had two shutouts um you know this season and of course they put up 61 points um east buck with a uh 34 27 victory uh really hard fought game like i said uh and, and really two different styles of teams um you know, I was really impressed with the way that East Buck just pounds the ball. Um, you know, it's there is no hiding the fact of what they're going to do. They're going to take the ball and they're going to try to run it down your throat. Um, they're not going to do any kind of misdirection or fancy plays. It's just a straight, you know, smash mouth type of team. And, you know, uh, I think I had I had them for uh, – Oh, well over 300 yards rushing. I see their official uh, total there at 428. They had a trio of running backs uh, top 100 yards. Ryland Cornell is credited with 161. Uh, Hunter Bowers um, had 121 and a couple touchdowns. And then Tanner Third, uh, 143 and a couple touchdowns. And, um, you know, they really uh, – They really kind of took over late. Um, they had an opportunity to capitalize on some miscues. There's a fumbled punt um, right about midfield, midway through the fourth, that could have uh, led to the go-ahead touchdown for Alvernet. Uh, good hustle play, I believe. Uh, Coach Alden uh, said it was their snapper, uh, Owen Reck, that hustled downfield and got the fumble recovery. Um and that turned into a, a Bowers touchdown uh, to put them up uh, uh, by a score. So, um, you know, there was another fumble on the kickoff return that allowed them to to ice it with less than two minutes with uh, Albert having a chance to go down and tie it. So uh, really impressed with uh, East Buck, who, you know, couldn't stop Albert uh, in the first half, Albernet only had two possessions, but turned both into touchdowns, um, touchdown passes. Uh, you know, Mason Neighbor uh, had two touchdown passes and threw for 215 yards for Albernet. Um, East Buck defense was a little more stout, especially at the beginning of the second half. But, you know, uh, I was really impressed with the way East Buck ran the ball. Um, and then – you know, Mason Neighbor is a quality QB for, for them, and they've got some good receivers that can uh, really go up. Uh, Grayson Carolyn, um, uh, Brayton Osborne, who made a really fantastic catch in the back of the end zone uh, right before the end of the first half. So uh, a lot of talent between uh, those two teams, different styles, and it's going to be interesting to see how things play out, um, you know, with Albernet, East Buck, and – Northland here down the road. 
Yeah, and uh, another thing, East Buck plays another one of those uh, Tri Rivers teams in Makoka Valley this week. And where where do the Wildcats fit in? Are they at that oh. level? Uh, maybe not, but uh, we'll find out. Uh, they're three and one as well, and they uh, I think they go to East Buck this week. Yeah, and I think their only loss was to West Branch. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. It was so, a it was a lopsided game, but West Branch is doing that to everybody right now. Right. Right. So it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and of course, they've got a talented player in Lance uh, McShane um, as well. Uh, some other uh, results uh, in the area uh, kind of mentioned. Uh, you know, Xavier went to Scott and got a 17-0 win down there. Um, you know, uh, a little surprised by the shutout uh, for the Saints. Uh, Cascade with a big win uh, yeah. over Dyersville Beckman, right? Yeah, and Beckman goes from from number one in one A to, to out of the rankings altogether. Now, do you attribute that? You know, we talked about. I think it was last week we talked about just kind of the parity in one A. Um, you know, do you think that's the big reason why? Uh, just because there are a lot of teams that were really even, and you know, stubbing your toe like that could could make a big difference at this point in the season. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, the way I looked at it, there's just so many. So many good teams that don't have a loss yet that I think uh, deserve to be ahead of Beckman now. Plus the fact that Beckman's been winning close. You know, their their other three games were were uh, there, there weren't style points. Not that I condone running up the score, but uh, you know, those they played Anamosa close, and a couple other games were two score games. I think so. Uh, in my way of thinking, when I did my ballot for this week, I, you know, I, I moved him. I had him three last week, and I've got him, you know, just just barely outside the top ten now. And Jeff, uh, guys, I'll, I actually was listening to the last uh, offensive drive uh, on the radio on my way home from North Lynn the other night. Was able to pick up um, Dyersville as a station, right? Or there's a station, yeah, KDST. They do a really good job. Yeah, uh, so was able to kind of listen to the last, you know, two minutes or minute and a half of that, and you know Beckman scored on the last play of regulation mm -hmm. uh, on a pass, and then Coach Mark Atwater he rolled the dice and said, "Hey, you know, I don't want to play overtime. We're either going to win this or we're going to lose it." And Cascade did a great job defensively on the two point conversion and kind of snuffed the play, and uh, so. You know, it sounded like a great game all the way around. And, uh, you know, talk to a couple of coaches are up there. I mean, it's like they, Cascade does, isn't deep, doesn't have a ton of kids, but the guys that they have out there are really good football players. And, yeah. um, you know, they're having a really good uh, a really good season. Yeah, they've got two really high-quality wins. I mean, we were all really high on Monticello to start the year, and then Cascade beats Monticello to start the season. And now, now they've, uh, they've beaten Beckman as well. So. Yeah, uh, Cascades, another team we've got to really consider in that, uh, you know, that one in top ten. You know, a couple other uh, results that just kind of jump out to me here. You know, Mediapolis, Regina, I thought that was a big game. Yep. Uh, Media, Mediapolis comes away with a 17-7 victory. Um, you know, I, I think uh, a game that a lot of people had circled um, on the old uh, – Calendar was uh, Dowling and City High, and City High or uh, Dowling won uh, comfortably, uh, thirty-four to zero. You know, we talked a little bit about it last week. Um, you know, I, I guess this might kind of support the point that we were saying that right now, the, the top tier teams in, you know, Central Iowa, we don't have a contender over here. Uh, to crack that group yet at least it doesn't seem like it and that was I think that that result kind of supports that yeah I, I, yeah I think so too KJ and it's um just reading a little bit about that game the yardage was fairly close not that yardage means anything uh but City High was went for it on fourth down I think it was six times in the game and didn't convert really? any didn't convert any of them um uh, 
and I don't know the field situations. I, I would assume that they were, you know, uh, close to the 50 and on down. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, we've been saying it all year, guys. I mean, it, somebody in Eastern Iowa was going to have to step up and, and be one of the big dogs and, in, in suburban Des Moines, uh, to, uh, you know, to prove to me anyway, that, uh, you know, that, that things are a little more equal, uh, quality wise than, than, uh, than what they have been. Now, how about this for a result? Marion for the second straight week, uh, Wolves knock off a ranked team this time beating central to wit down, uh, in DeWitt 20 to 13, spoiling, uh, the Sabres homecoming. Yeah, Marion's got something going right now. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, Marion and Western Dubuque didn't look like, you know, much fun at all. They were both 0 2. Now they're both 2 and 2, and uh, both have some momentum going. Yeah, and you know, I I was I saw Marion against Cedar Rapids Washington three weeks ago now, two weeks ago, whatever it is. Um, and I never would have. I mean, just and this is no offense to anybody, but just watching them that night, I mean, they were not not a team that I thought was going to go back to back and and go beat Benton and, and DeWitt Central. But that's improvement, right? That's that's coaching. That's that's what you want. And those are two really nice wins and. Uh, you know, the Wolves definitely have some things going. So uh, good on them. I mean, they've already surpassed their win total from last season, right? When then they win just one game last year. That's correct. Yeah. Um, just to backtrack a little bit, I actually uh, had a game on Thursday night too. Cedar Rapids, Washington, and Linmar. A uh, really good contest there. One that uh, Linmar kind of broke open in the last quarter. You know, I think a lot of uh, I think there's been a lot of uh, uh, focus or people know that Linmar has kind of gone through the the whole deal with their field and stuff. And it's almost kind of like deja vu for coach Tim Global. You know, he was at Marion when uh, the derecho hit and displaced uh, the Marion team uh, where they actually used Linmar's stadium for their home games, uh, you know, that season. And here now, Linmar uh, Lovell's the head coach there, and they're dealing with something uh, not quite the same, but displaced because of the turf uh, installation issues that they had. Uh, they're practicing at uh, uh, Oak Ridge Middle School um, up there. Talked about how they're using the concession stand for the coach's office, um, sure. you know, during that time um, by the baseball diamonds and, and stuff. And here, uh, Linmar's two and two now after that come from behind win. They've got Carter Henderson back who, uh, you know, uh, ran pretty hard. Um, you know, I think uh, they've got some uh, pieces on the, the defensive side that uh, uh, could help them if they keep growing here as they go on. And, of course, they've got Jefferson here at home, finally actually at home uh, at Linmar this uh this week. So um, we'll see how Limar kind of builds on, on what they were able to do last week against Wash and now being even looking to go above 500 uh, since going one and oh after a win to open against Muscatine. Uh, a couple other uh, things just to point out uh, Mount Vernon uh, goes to four and oh with a win over uh, center point Urbana 42 six and then Central City. Central City's now four and all guys uh, after a 44 20 win over Midland. Yeah, yeah. Jay, you, uh, you, you did your uh, rewind on them last week. Uh, I don't know for certain if it's math mathematically done, but if, if not, it's awful close. Central City's clinched the playoff birds. Um, what, what did you learn about the Wildcats when, when you talked talk to Coach Myers on Saturday? Yeah, you know, coach was he, uh, Matt was our our coach of the year here. Um, what six, seven, eight years ago, maybe somewhere in there. Um, when he led them to uh, the Wildcats to to the uh, to the eight player playoffs, and you know, so he's a good coach. You know, he's at Cedar Rapids Kennedy before that. He knows what he's doing. Um, you know, he he basically just said, "Hey, I mean, we've got a bunch of kids that have that won, have won all the way up." you know, to their, to their high school years and, and, 
uh, you know, youth football and whatnot. And they were just young, uh, you know, playing as freshmen and sophomores. And that's always going to be tough as, as you guys know, but you know, now those freshmen and sophomores are, are juniors and seniors and, uh, you know, they're growing into this winning thing. And I think we'll find out a lot guys this week when, uh, Easton Valley comes, uh, comes to Northern Lynn County there to, to take on, uh, the Wildcats. We'll see. Uh, just exactly how, how much uh, improved uh, Central City is. But it's a great story uh, regardless right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, you know, the stats, it looks like they've actually got some, some sophomores that are contributing too. And maybe this is a team that could be a, a real player in things in 23. Yeah, and, and, and Coach Myers said that um, – you know, not only not only have they have they won all the way up through, uh, you know, since they were youths, but he's got a lot of he's got some depth. They're able to um, they have legitimately uh, a true varsity team and a and uh, a legitimate you know JV team, and he's able to split them up. I mean, the numbers aren't huge or anything like that, but still, the varsity practices against the varsity, the JV practices against the JV, so. You know, the good players are going against the good players every day, uh, you know, in practice. And I think that helps. And he's got some depth, he said, especially defensively. They're able to rotate guys, uh, you know, out depending on the series. And, uh, you know, that's a huge advantage as well. So, yeah, just a good story. I mean, we've got some pretty good football in Lynn County <laughs> when you look at it, right, this, this fall? Yeah. The rural, um, the rural schools. One, one thing with Easton Valley, you know, that was a team that was at the Dome last year, uh, had a lot of uh, key parts coming back. Uh, I thought one of the top teams, an eight player, uh, lost the opening week 34-30 to Don Bosco, and they've been on a tear ever since um, with three straight wins. The last one, I think this is kind of interesting, back-to-back -back weeks, Easton Valley's doing their little catbird swing. Remember the yeah. catbirds? Mm -hmm. uh, Springville and Central City shared their program. So they were the Catbirds at one time. Uh, then they split up and uh, uh, both have uh, their own eight player um, programs. But Easton Valley hitting the old Catbirds back to back weeks. So that's a cracker bowl. Is that always at the end of the year or not necessarily? Maybe it's uh, next week. Next week. All next right. Week. Well, yeah, one of those uh, uh, really fun games uh, throughout the season and, and one of those uh, neat uh, neat rivalry games um, that are out there. And speaking of rivalry games, uh, perfect transition. Uh, I, I'm going to have the battle of – is it battle of the boot or battle for the boot? I think it's four. Four. Okay. okay. So I'll battle try, for yeah. the boot. All right, so I've got the battle, uh, a battle for the boot between Iowa City West and Iowa City High. Um, interestingly, coming in, it's Iowa City West that's three and one, um, and Iowa City High that's uh, two and two. And uh, <clears throat> City High on the road again, even though it's just across town. This will be at Iowa City West. Um, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, kind of interesting. Um, you know, both teams have really good quarterbacks and Drew Larson and uh, uh, Jack Wallace. Um, I believe, JJ, you just did a feature that you can still find at thegazette.com on Christian Janice. Uh, Wes does have uh, uh, some big playmakers, don't they? Yeah, 100%. And I think this could this is could be one of those really good West City High games um friday night just because of what you said i think both teams can can score and have some some pretty dynamic guys um offensively and and things and you know it's good to see uh you know west i think garrett hartwig's one of the be best coaches around here and and a terrific guy uh to be quite honest with you uh and he's done a great job and you know janice as you mentioned kj was a kid that Hurt himself in the first game last year, and that was he was a primary weapon for him. And and now he's back healthy, and you know seven or eight touchdowns I think already in their first and less than handful of games. And you know we all know City High's played a tough schedule, taking a couple of taking a couple of knocks, but uh, 
you know, this is really looking forward to this uh, because I think personally, I don't know what you guys say, but I think this could be uh, one of those that go right down to the wire. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, and at first, maybe at the beginning of the year, I wasn't really sure. I, mm-hmm. I wasn't really sure if uh, that was going to be a, a real competitive game. But the way West has played uh, through the first half, um, you know, I, I think they're uh, – I was really impressed watching them against Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Um, and you got City High that, like you said, even though they're 2-2, two and two, it's a little bit of a misnomer, um, you know, a little bit better – um two and two team than you normally would would think yeah. And, um yeah this will be uh I think this will be a really good game uh there at west uh between those two um yeah Leonard, it was, uh, I think I, I was there last year uh I think it was my first battle for the boot game it was last year and uh I think it was 56 to seven so I imagine uh I imagine that's probably been brought up a few times over on the west side of town. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of interesting. I don't think bound is correct here, um, but maybe so. Uh, they have they have West winning five of the last six games in the series. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I have to double check and see if that's accurate. But uh, yeah, City High uh, winning big last year and. Um, you know, I'm sure that doesn't sit well with the old home team. Right. I'm trying well, to think that would have been, I'm sorry, KJ, that would have been Marcus Morgan. Uh, they had some really good teams though. West did right. When he was the quarterback and, mm-hmm. um, I think went to the dome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah. So maybe it does make sense, even though it it's, it shouldn't, or it doesn't seem like it's there, right? <laughs> right. You know? Yep. Um, and then, uh, Jeff, you're going to be at uh, Xavier versus Washington. Yeah. Um, and at, that, Kings, at Kingston Stadium. Yeah, and I think it's Xavier's first time at Kingston in, in several years. I don't think they've been there for a while. Uh, when, you know, with the move out of uh, the, the quote-unquote big school class, they've – uh, I don't think they played any of the Cedar Rapids schools, particularly, yeah, particularly at Kingston. I know they played Linmar for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, one of the big storylines with that is uh, Dwayne Schulte going for number 200 at Xavier. Yeah, the only, uh, the only coach uh, Xavier's had in 25 years. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. 200 wins um, there in just a little over two decades. Um, especially starting pretty much from scratch with merging uh Regis and LaSalle, but uh, uh that, he, he wins a year, and uh, considering he did a lot of that, uh, those first few years against Kennedy and Iowa City High and Iowa City West and Cedar Falls Prairie, you know, those first few years, quite a few years in the battle, that's right. That's right. And I looked it up, guys. He won. He won twenty five games, I believe it was, prior to that when he was at LaSalle. So mm-hmm. the guy's pretty much won his entire coaching career. Uh, yeah. You know, just uh, he's a Hall of Famer for a reason, I guess. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and we'll we'll uh, be one of those things that'll come back uh, here a little bit down the road. Um, with uh, who's got more, I'm going to put you guys to the test here. Um, after uh, after a couple more, a uh, couple different segments, but um, I want to get to one thing that's kind of bubbled up um, since last Friday: controversy with uh, City High and West Des Moines Dowling. Um, you know, they canceled their uh, sophomore JV game set for Monday just because. Uh, Friday got a little chippy. Um, I know there's some things being said on social media that we, we're not going to jump into. Um, if there are things that need to get handled, that's for administrators and association to handle. But I, I'm just wondering 
from the games that you've seen this year, when it comes to chippiness and, you know, kind of the demeanor and the interaction between players on the field, what have you guys noticed? Is it, you know, is sportsmanship still there? Are things uh, more physical and are, are players more demonstrative um, with their actions? Or, or what have you noticed in the demeanor of of players and kind of the, the atmosphere around um, like competition? I honestly haven't noticed much. Um, the only thing I would have – I wouldn't even call it chippy. Uh, Kennedy came out when they played Wash the other day. They they came out and ran out to the center of the field, and a couple of the Washington guys were still pretty close to the center of the field, and there's, there's a little barking going on there, but that was pregame, and I didn't notice much of that much. I mean, the, the game was played clean, so – you know, when, when you're in the press box and away from the stadium, you don't notice a whole lot. I, I haven't seen hardly anything that all in the first four weeks that I would consider unsportsmanlike. I would agree. Um, saw a little bit of a coach's, I wouldn't even call it a flare-up, but a misunderstanding. Exchange. Yeah, from Exchange. from distance, from sideline to sideline. Uh, in the Marion Washington game that uh, it was a misunderstanding. Let's, let's just put it that way. It wasn't anything. I don't think that was mean spirit spirited or carried over or anything like that. So from uh, I haven't seen anything player wise this season, at least of the games that I've been at that have been suspect or questionable. KJ, you mentioned Dowling and city high uh, read that. Uh Ankeny beat Southeast Polk, we know, in that big game last Friday night. And apparently there was uh, uh, some damage. I don't – I haven't read or haven't heard exactly how much, but there was damage to the locker room, uh, the visiting locker room at, at Southeast Polk inflicted by some of the Ankeny um, players, I assume. Uh, so, you know, I guess <laughs> maybe it's a 5A problem, huh? Maybe yeah, I ought to watch it a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, you know, there. It, it's it's really interesting to see how uh, you know. This isn't anything new. You know, we've we've seen stuff occur. You wish it wouldn't. Um, you know, we've had games where teams have had stuff stolen out of their locker room, so it's happened in the locker room. Uh, JJ, we've we were covering a game on uh, TV once that uh, you know we saw the interaction between a, a coach and a player, which mm -hmm. eventually led to uh, some grander things happening to that coach and, and being dismissed. Uh, so it's nothing new, but you know, personally, I have not seen I have not seen that in. And the, the spotlight's a lot bigger. I've not seen it happen more frequently, if that makes sense. And we have a bigger spotlight to where, you know, a lot of things that these kids do, it's almost like a college or, or pro level. You know, you've got uh, TV running these games back. You've got live streams. If, if you step out of line, it's going to get shown. I think coaches – probably emphasize that point to I have not seen a greater number of issues. It's just maybe uh, when things do happen, people know about it and it gets shared and it's out there for everybody to see now. Does I would that agree. make sense? Yeah. And I think, was it last year where there was, or two years ago, um, where a player on a, a team accused the other team of um, saying something racial to him when he was tackled out of bounds on, on the opposing team sideline. And that was investigated. And I don't think there anything. Been a, there have been a few incidences over yeah. the years. 
you know. Yeah, but you know, no, you're exactly right, KJ. I mean, there's no, there's no hiding that kind of stuff. Not that you did before, but uh, you know, with social media and and a camera literally in everybody's hand. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that stuff's going to be uh, everybody's going to be uh, should be increasingly heightened uh, as far as knowing that. Yeah, you know, if I do something questionable, uh, you darn sure you're darn right is going to end up. Uh, somebody's going to take a picture of it or a video of it and share it on social media. So the age we live in, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, things that are like that should be brought to people's attention, should be, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, taken care of and dealt with uh, swiftly. Uh, moving on to uh, our knockout pool. I'm going to do my Kramer impersonation and say, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I have been knocked out. I uh, went the adventurous route last week and went with a game I thought was going to be close. Went with Albernet over East Buck, and the old Buccaneers knocked me out of the knockout pool. I'm done. I imagine uh, you heard about that, too. Uh, just <laughs> not, not much. Just a little. Most of it was good natured. So uh, I'll eat my crow. Uh, Pluck the feathers out first and and eat my crow like I like I should. Uh, Was well, a tough decision, but I went the wrong way. Um, but heck of a game between East Buck and Albernet. So that leaves the Jeffs and Nathan uh, still alive in the knockout pool. Who are you going with this week, fellas? Go ahead, JJ. You're gonna have to tell me what classes I have left. I'm sorry, Jeff. Uh, you're, you're out of. 4A, you're out of 8 player, you're out of 1A and A. So you got what, 2A, 3A, 5A left. 1A, 2, or 2A, 3A, 5A. Uh, if you want to give Nathan's, I'll effort doing one real yeah, quick. Yeah, Nathan, if you want to email me yours, go ahead. Um, I've got, I'm going to go ahead and take Mid Prairie over Central Lane. Okay. Um, boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm going to do, uh, ah, heck, we'll just do a 2A game. We'll do uh, uh, Monticello over West Liberty. You know what, JJ? I screwed up. I was looking at KJ's smile here. Okay. Uh, you, you, you've got, uh, you've used 3A, you've used 5A, you've used 2A, and you've used 8 player. You got 1A, and uh, what do you have left? 1A, A, and four a okay then i'll just i'll do do a one a um how about uh regina with the bounce back win over wilton how's that there we go okay and oh, that's wow. not you know I'll, I'll go tougher like you know kj led the way last week and went tough so yeah uh nathan went beckman over postville okay all right, so we're set. You got the tough one this week. And, yeah. Uh, as hard as it is to believe, I don't want to say that's a domination game, but if, uh, let's say Regina gets beat, they're 0 and 2, and they still have West Branch and Durant left in, in district play. That, uh, that there makes you go. it tough. I believe in you, Regals. There you go. All right. So just to let you guys know where we're going to be at this next week, uh, we mentioned uh, Jeff Linder is going to be uh, at uh, Xavier um, at Washington in Kingston Stadium. Uh, I will be at uh, City High at Iowa City West, the battle for the boot. Um, JJ will be out at uh, Central City for that big eight-player matchup between Easton Valley and the Wildcats. Um, we'll have a correspondent, uh, Mike Condon, will be at Lidmar. Uh, for their true home opener uh, against Cedar Rapids Jefferson. Uh, Cully Klein will be at uh, Prairie as the uh, Hawks host Ottumwa. Uh, JJ mentioned uh, uh, Wilton at Regina's playing, but we'll have uh, uh, Ryan Plagenkuehl, um at North Scott at Liberty, some, others, uh, some other games of note. Uh, Marion heads to Western Dubuque. As we said, both teams 0-2, now 2-2. Uh, facing off against each other. Uh, Kennedy will be at Dubuque Senior. Benton at uh, Mount Vernon. 
Um, Northland heads all the way to South Winnesheek. Albernet will try to bounce back against Highland. Uh, you got Center Point Urbana at West Delaware. Um, and then Minneapolis at West Branch um, as some of those uh, stand out. And Baxter at BGM, I think that's a game that uh, um, should be kind of on the radar as well. Um, that, that game uh, might contain a lot of points. That one might get over with around 11, 11.30. Right. Uh, so uh, for time constraints, uh, we'll skip the four down questions. Uh, if you want to, go ahead and uh, head to uh, thegazette.com and check out our weekly four down uh, questions. We talk about our midseason MVP, um, you know, uh, some of the, the, the deep talent in the Iowa City metro area. Also, our take on uh, surprise teams and, and whether the seven class system is is uh, working. What I want to do is I want to test you guys here. Uh, I always have fun doing the who's got more. So I've got five who's got more um, or who has most, I guess, because I did the three options for each question. You guys ready to try to tackle these? Let's do Let's it. Go. Okay. So we mentioned uh, Dwayne Schultz is going for win number 200 um, again at Xavier uh, against uh, Washington this week, right? So who's got more? Dwayne Schulte wins at Xavier. Points allowed by Jefferson this season. Or game high rushing yards by Cascades Jack Minster. Oh boy. So you know where Schulte stands. You just have to yeah. figure out whether or not Jefferson and Minster are above that threshold. Or below it. Four. I mean, I'm they, going Jeff. They played four. They gave up 77 to City, but they only gave up 19. I'm going to say Menster's got the most. I agree. I'm going Menster. Okay. So we know Schulte's at 199. Jefferson's points, 198. <laughs> Jack Menster rushed for 202 yards against Anamosa. So you guys are right, Jack Menster. All right, here, number two. Who's got the most? Um, Bell Plain interceptions. Oh, jeez. East Buchanan pass completions total. Or most sacks in a game by Mackay Benton of Central City. Most what in the game? Sacks. In a game? Yes. All right. So let me do this logically. Benton had, all right. I looked this up. I think he had 10 sacks total. I'm talking to myself. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> Talk it out. That's all right. The good game shows do that. Yeah. They want to hear the thought process, right? And that in a game, so I'm going with Kai Benton sacks in a game. Okay, you're going so East Buchanan passes in a season or Bell Plain interception this season. East Buchanan pass completions this season, so total over, over their four games. It was one uh, last week, Wendy. Uh, Lindy, I'll even help you out. They had one last week, All one right. for one for a touchdown, by the way. That's right. So there you go. <laughs> I'll, I, I, and logic says East Buchanan, which probably means it's not, but I'll, I'll play along and say it should be East Buchanan completions. Okay. East Buchanan has eight pass completions this season. Bell Plain has seven interceptions. I know. Mackay Benton had nine sacks in one of the games. He You're has a game of nine sacks. Woo! JJ, 2-0. Okay, this one's a little bit more straightforward, a little simpler. Uh, which quarterback has the most passing yards? You've got Casey Coakley of Maquoketa, Joey Romberg of Mount Vernon, or Mitchell Johnson of Independence? You want me to go first this time, Jeff? Sure. All right, I'm going to go uh, – this is a pass completion, did you say, KJ? 
yards. Uh, passing yards. Yard, passing yard. yards. Okay. Um, okay. Number five. I'm going. Uh, I'm going Mitchell Johnson with this one, okay. just because I have a nephew named Mitchell Johnson. So. <laughs> there you I go. Did. Scientific. I'm going to go Mitchell Johnson because he played. He's played one more game. Okay. Ah, very well, good. According to Bound, uh, Mitchell Johnson has 544 yards uh, passing. Joey Romberg has 757 yards passing, and Casey Coakley of Makokita 797 yards passing through Week Four. So Casey Coakley as uh, the most uh, passing. Good job, Casey. Good job, Casey. Okay, biggest point differential for a team. Average, uh, their their biggest point differential uh, through uh, this last week. Is that Northland, Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, or Williamsburg? Okay, 62. Jeff, you got to go first this time. Williamsburg's played so many good teams. I'm going to say it's not them. Um, I'll say Northland because they put it on Clayton Ridge pretty good. I'll say Northland. All right. I'll go. Uh, 28, 3, so 5. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Kennedy. Williamsburg. Their point differential is 26.8. Wow. Northland, 25.3. Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, 28.3. So the Cougars went in by an average of 28.3 points per game. So, JJ, I, I think that makes you three and one, right? Yeah. Do I win a t shirt or anything? Not yet. You got one more. Yeah, uh, one more. Okay. All right. All right. So this is worth uh, 10,000 points. So, Linder, <laughs> you, can, you can make up the difference here. Who has the most rushing touch, touchdowns so far this season? Lance McShane of Mac Valley, Andy Henson of West Branch, or Lewis Central as a team? <laughs> well, I'll go McShane. Trying to think. Henson had six last week. Uh, so that's a lot. So I'm counting out Lewis Central. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Han uh, Hanson. The answer is Lance McShane. Ah, McShane had twelve, has twelve. Andy Henson has eleven. Lewis Central ten. Wow. I thought I thought the team. Uh, I thought the team total would maybe throw you guys off a little bit, especially being a, a top team like Lewis Central, only with 10 uh, touchdowns. Lance, just a junior, by the way. So, someone to keep an wow. eye out. For sure. For sure. He's done some really good things so far and does a little bit of everything for uh, Mac Valley. And who did you say uh, Mac Valley had this week? And another East Buck. Uh, Decent game against East Buck. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be a good test for for both. All right. Uh, any parting shots, guys? Um, let everybody know where they can they can follow you at uh, online and and what you've got going on the rest of the week. Go ahead, JJ. At JEJE66, I'm writing something for Friday on uh, Monticello's Preston Reese. Uh, leading tackler, leading rusher, leading thrower, our, uh, punch for him. So he hardly ever leaves the field. I will recruit. So, uh, look, be on the lookout for that. And, uh, you know, if, if we have, uh, any sort of issue like Iowa did last week and getting in games Friday night, I'm going to throw a fit, but I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think we're going to. So no. take a jacket. That's right. Um, <laughs> tonight, let's see. I've got some volleyball notes up and uh, volleyball super tens up today. Uh, Iowa women's basketball uh, TV schedule came out today. They're going to be they're going to be on ESPN two four times this year, oh, wow. and uh, 
couple of Fox games and uh, ESPN and uh, FS1. So they're going to be on national TV. I got a question for you guys. Do you guys consider BTN national TV? I don't. Uh, I, I would call that regional. Where where does it how I mean does it extend the markets outside of where the schools are? I I think it's just from Nebraska to to the East Coast. I don't think it's in the in SEC land or or Pac twelve country yet. I I mean it will be in a couple of years, but I I don't think I I, I would call that regional TV. But I anyway, would, that's I that's just me that. being funny. Uh, anyway, I got that out. Um, uh, cross country tomorrow or Seminole Valley, Eastern Iowa classic. And then Friday I've got football at, uh, Kingston and Saturday, I'm just going to be a fan over Jack Trice. Sounds Your good. I, uh, we've got some it? prep golf notes, uh, coming up here, uh, today. Kind of interesting to see how the postseason field shakes up. And, and actually that's going to be our first fall championship here. It's only, a couple weeks away really about two and a half weeks away when uh uh the ihsaa state golf tournament you know, start, state golf tournament will be held at elmcrest country club here in cedar rapids so uh we're getting uh we're already rapidly approaching uh you know kind of that uh the fall postseason um i'll also have uh check the gazette.com um for a feature on uh, marion um, later this week, uh, also have a, a small college feature as well. And, uh, like I mentioned, I'll be at the battle for the boot, uh, this weekend at Iowa City West. So, uh, if you see me wandering around and look lost, help me get to where I need to be and say hi. Um, you know, um, and then, uh, I'll have our rewind Saturday for, for Sunday, uh, to, to kind of catch up on some of the happenings on Friday night. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching and following us uh, uh, today. Make sure you check out all our content at thegazette.com. Uh, for Jeff Linder, for Jeff Johnson, our producer, uh, Nathan T. Ford. I uh, appreciate you guys viewing us every week. Uh, make sure you keep your head on a swivel. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>